Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. We are continuing with different family planning methods and today we shall discuss the intrauterine devices or the IOTs. As the name suggests, these IODs or intrauterine devices are placed inside the uterine cavity. IODs can be either non-medicated or medicated. The medicated IODs release either the metal ion which is copper or it releases the hormone which is the progesterogens. There are three different generations of IOD, first generation, second generation and the third generation. The first generation IODs are the non-medicated or the inert devices. Second generation IODs are the copper devices, whereas the third generation IODs are the hormone releasing devices. Let us talk about the first generation IOD first. So they comprise the inert or non-medicated device. Lipids loop is the most commonly used first generation IOD, which is a S-shaped device made of polyethylene, which is a plastic material. As you can see, this is an S-shaped, a tortuous structure and these are the tails of the IODs. This is lipis loop. It exists in four different sizes, size A, B, C and D, D being the largest and A being the smallest. Larger size device usually has a greater anti-fertility effect and also lower expansion, expulsion rate, but there is higher removal rate because of side effects like pain and bleeding because of the large size. The larger loops that is size C and D are more suitable for multiparous women where the uterine cavity is large. Then we have the second generation IOD. They release the metallic copper ion. This metallic copper has strong anti-fertility effect. The addition of copper has made it possible to develop smaller devices which are easier to fit even in nulliparous women. These are the different copper releasing IODs. The earlier devices include copper 7 and copper T200, whereas the newer devices include different various variants of the T devices like copper T220C and copper T380A. This A stands for Argentum, which is the Latin name for silver. So this is a copper 380A. There is a silver wire around which the copper coil exists. There is also Nova T and multi-load devices like CU250 and CU375. So these are the different copper devices. What are the advantages of copper devices? There is low expulsion rate, lower incidence of side effects like pain and bleeding. It is easier to fit even in nullipara women because of the smaller size. They are better tolerated by the nullipara. Increased contraceptive effectiveness because of the metallic ion. Effective as post-coital contraceptives if it is inserted within 3 to 5 days of the unprotected intercourse. Next, we have the third generation IODs. There are two uh, third generation IODs which are commonly used. The most widely used hormonal device is the Progestasart. This is the name, which is a T-shaped device filled with 38 milligram of progesterone, which is the natural hormone. So this is the uh, Progestasart device and uh, the hormone that is present or that is being released from this third generation IOD is the progesterone, the natural one. The hormone is released slowly in the uterus at the rate of 65 microgram daily. It has a direct local effect on the uterine lining, on the cervical mucus and possibly on the sperms. The next one that is used is the LNG20 also available in the name of Mirena. It is a T-shaped IOD which releases 20 microgram of levonorgestrel which is a synthetic steroid. It has a low pregnancy rate 0.2 per 100 women and less number of ectopic pregnancies. So these two processes are and LNG20 are the two third generation IODs which releases hormone. Progesterone 
releases progesterone which is the natural hormone at the rate of 65 microgram daily whereas LNG20 releases 20 microgram of levonorgestrel daily which is a synthetic progesterone. What are the different mechanism of action of this intrauterine devices? When you are talking about the inner devices that is the first generation devices, they cause foreign body reaction in the uterus causing cellular and biochemical changes in the endometrium and uterine fluids and it is believed that these changes impair the viability of the gamete and thus reduce the chance of fertilization. The second generation devices which release copper and this copper enhances the cellular response in the endometrium and also has effect on enzymes of the uterus. By altering the biochemical composition of the cervical mucus, copper ions may affect sperm motility, capacitation and also survival of the sperm. And because of this, fertilization has less chance to occur. The third generation, which is the hormone releasing device, they increase the viscosity of the cervical mucus and thereby prevent sperm from entering the cervix. They also maintain high level of progesterone in the endometrium and thus relatively low level of estrogen, thereby sustaining an endometrium which is unfavorable to implantation. So that means even if fertilization takes place, the endometrium is not very much favorable for the implantation. So these are the different mechanism of action. Next change of IOD. So how frequently these IODs should be changed? Inert IODs such as lipid loop may be left in place as long as required if there are no side effects. So it can be kept inside the uterine cavity as long as needed provided there is no side effect. The copper T38TA uh, which is a newer generation uh, of IOD which is which belongs to the second generation copper releasing device is approved for use of 10 years. However, it has been demonstrated to maintain its efficacy over the last 12 years of use. The copper T200 is approved for 4 years and nobody for 5 years. The progesterone releasing IODs must be replaced every year because the reservoir of progesterone is depleted in 12 to 18 months. So it should be changed every year. The levonorgestrel IOD which is basically the LNG20 is used for at least 7 years or probably 10 years. What are the different merits of using IODs? First is simplicity and it is very easy to insert the um, IOD in the uterine cavity. It takes only a few minutes and can also be done in the subcenter by the trained health worker like AM. It does not require any hospitalization. Once inserted, IOD stays in place as long as needed. It is inexpensive, it is reversible, that means once the IOD is taken out or removed, fertility is again regained. Free of systemic metabolic side effects, which is quite common for hormonal preparations. There is no need to continuous motivation and there is also highest continual rate. Now we need to know what are the contraindications of IOD insertion. There are some absolute contraindications and some relative contraindications. So absolute contraindications are the uh, different conditions when the IOD must not be inserted. These include suspected pregnancy, PID or pebble inflammatory disease, vaginal bleeding of undiagnosed etiology, cancer of cervix, uterus, adnexia and other pelvic tumors and also history of previous ectopic pregnancy. The relative contraindications include anemia, menorrhagia, history of PID since last pregnancy, purulent cervical discharge, distortions of the uterine cavity due to congenital malformations, presence of fibroids and also unmotivated person. So these are the relative contraindications. Who is an ideal candidate for IOD insertion? A woman who has born at least one child, there is no history of pelvic inflammatory disease, has normal menstrual period, who is motivated and willing to check the IOD tail quite regularly, has access to follow up and treatment of potential problems and is in a monogamous relationship. So these are the different criteria and whenever a woman fulfill all these criteria, she is a 
ideal candidate for IOD insertion. Timing of insertion when IOD should be inserted either during menstrual period especially during the menstruation or within 10 days of the beginning of the menstrual period. It can also be taken up during the first week after the delivery before the woman leaves the hospital because it is quite easy to motivate her for the IOD uh, option and also her uterus is receptive of the IOD. It is quite easier to insert the IOD since the os is dilated during the postpartum period, immediate postpartum period. Follow up. Why follow up are needed? Because there is need to provide motivation and emotional support to the women to confirm the presence of IOD by checking the tail of the IOD and also diagnose and treat if there is any side effect or any complication. Now the question is what are the different complications and side effects of IOD insertion? The most common complaint is bleeding followed by pain. There is also chance of pelvic infection. Uterine perforation is rare but can also occur. The incidence being 1 is to 150 to 1 is to 9000 insertion. Pregnancy can also occur. The failure rate is about 3% in the first year. Very rarely ectopic pregnancy can occur and also expulsion can occur which can be either partial or complete. Because of all the side effects and complication there is need, need of follow up by the uh, recipient of the IOD. So with this we conclude today's session. We have discussed the different types of IODs uh, with examples their mechanism of action, their different merits, uh, the different uh, contraindication, absolute contraindication and relative contraindication of IOD insertion. Then uh, we learned about the ideal candidate for IOD insertion, the different complications and side effects of IOD insertion, etc. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates, juniors and friends from other college. We also have a Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Take care and we shall see you in our next video.